So thank you. Once again, good afternoon to you all. On behalf of Institutions Innovation Council, Kamraj College of Engineering Technology, SPGC Nagar K. Velagulam, I welcome you all to this session on discussion on field visit for problem identification. Myself, Dr. K. Kannan, working as professor and head in the Department of Mechatronics Engineering. The content of this session includes objective of the session, outcome from the session, what is meant by problem, how to identify a problem, and how the field visit helps to identify the real-time problems in an industry, and about TVS three chakra tires, and uh, the list of problems we identified during our field visit in three chakra tires, and the key takeaway from this session. Uh, this is the content of uh, this session. As we are following the outcome based education, each and every academic activity should have clear, well defined objective as well as outcome. So this is one of the academic activity. So this session is also having certain objective. The main objective of this session is to have a discussion about the field visit which we made to TVS T Chakra Limited Madurai to identify the real time problems in Sri Chakra tires. Outcome of this session at the end of the discussion in this session, you will be able to understand the importance of field visits for the real time problem identification. So we'll start the session by means of discussing the term of problem. What is problem? Every academicians, uh, researchers, as well as industries uh, uses this problem term more frequently. So what is problem? Uh, this term is varies from person to person. In general, the problem is a difference between what should be and what it is what should be and what it is it expresses the difference between the expectations and the actual situation it's directly or indirectly related to a desired outcome or standard of behavior or standard of behavior for example in a manufacturing industry a machine is installed with the expected productivity of 100 pieces per shift. Okay. At the time of installation, the productivity of the machine satisfies the expectation. As days go, normally there will be reduction in the productivity. Instead of producing 100 pieces per shift, the operator is able to achieve only 90 pieces per shift. That's a problem. We are expecting 100 pieces per shift from the particular machine. But using that machine, the operator is able to produce only 90 pieces per shift. So there is a difference. It's a problem. What's the problem? Time waste. Within the particular shift, we have to produce 100 pieces. But due to some issues related to the particular machine, the machine is able to produce only 90 pieces. So instead of producing 100, we are producing only 90 pieces. So time is wasted. We are also wasting the money. We have to pay the operator for a shift. But the productivity during the particular shift is very, very low. Even though productivity is low, we have to pay the entire money for the particular operator. So time waste, money waste, as well as the utilization of the machine is also waste. Okay, these are the problems in the context of manufacturing industry. Okay, How to identify the problem? So identifying a well-defined and a specific problem is a critical step for the successful implementation of the solution for the problem. Every problem should be addressed correctly 
we want to address the problem correctly we must identify the problem first correctly okay so the problem identification is part of the scientific method as it so as a first step in the systematic process to identify evaluate a problem and explore the potential solutions explore the potential solutions so problem identification calls upon educators academicians like me to utilize the multi source here source includes the instructions curriculum uh, the environment or infrastructure available in our college campus as well as the learner students in multi method approach this multi method approach involves a review of the particular problem interview with the persons who are related with the problem and observing the problem in real time and testing the problem also so these are the various methods for identifying the problem okay in gathering information I, this multi source as well as multi method is required for gathering information through which we are ensuring that the problem is matched with the evidence based standardized interventions or solutions so the clear definition of the problem identification provides foundation for a well organized solution in our example we took a machine in a manufacturing industry it creates some problem the productivity of the machine comes down after some duration from its installation what may be the causes for the decrease in productivity it may be due to the skill of the operator or it may be due to the delay in arrival of the raw material at the particular machine or it may be due to the electrical shortage or machine breakdown so these are the possible causes of the particular problem in the problem identification we have to identify the root cause for the particular problem the root cause for the problem that problem should be addressed so that only we can easily give the solution to the uh, problem we can give solution to the problem okay normally in the problem identification there will be two steps the first one is identifying and acknowledging that the problem exists identifying and acknowledging that the problem exists for example as i already told in the uh, previous case uh, manufacturing in the see there is a machine with the expected productivity of 100 pieces per shift but in a particular shift the operator is able to produce only 90 pieces in the next shift the machine will be operated by a, a different person different operator he may be able to produce 100 pieces then the problem is not associated with a particular a machine but there is a problem which occurred or existed in the previous shift okay so in the problem identification the first step is to identify and acknowledge um, there is a problem exists after that we have to develop the problem statement we have to coin the problem statement in a clear manner then only it will be possible to solve the problem so the effective problem identification which includes these two steps identifying and acknowledging the problem and developing the problem statement and developing the problem statement should be clear objective and specific should be clear objective as well as specific okay so so far we gave the some information which are available in the literature for the terms problem as well as problem statement or problem identification hereafter i am going to share our experience for the process of problem identification through the field visit through the field visit all of us know that we got the autonomous status for a period of 10 years during the academic year 2019 to 2020 okay 
but we implemented the autonomous status from the academic year 2020 to 2021 what's the difference before that we are the non autonomous institutions affiliated to the anna university so we have to follow the regulations as well as syllabus given by the anna university okay in the year 2020 and 21 we implemented the autonomy in our college that means we have freedom in framing the curriculum as well as syllabus for our students for our students and now act insisted all the higher education institutions to follow the obe outcome based education obe outcome based education uh from the last year they are insisting to implement the new education policy so whatever the guideline given by the central government as state government we have to implement it okay but we got the autonomous status and we implemented during the academic year 2020 and 21 and now become the autonomous institution affiliated to the anna university in the sense each and every department there will be one board of studies and there will be board of studies for each and every program offered by the uh, departments for example uh, the department of computer science and engineering offers two youth programs one in b in computer science and engineering another one is btech in artificial intelligence and data science at the time they should have two board of studies one is responsible for framing the curriculum as well as syllabus for the computer science and engineering students and another one is responsible for framing the syllabus as well as curriculum for the a and d students okay so once the syllabus framed by the vos members the particular syllabus will be put up to the statutory statutory body academic council of this college the principal is a third person for the academic council members third person for the academic council academic council body okay and the head of the departments and deans of this institution will be the internal members of this academic council this council also have the external members the external members are from well experienced academicians from uh, renowned education institutions in india that's from inside tamil nadu as well as from outside tamil nadu as well as the well experienced persons from industry one of the well experienced person representing the industry in our academic council committee is dr a n lakshmanan he is nothing but a general manager R&D of TVS Chiri Chakra Limited, Vellari Petty, Madurai 65122. Uh, okay. Uh, during the last uh, academic council meeting, he gave permission to visit their industry. To visit their industry. Since this period is coming under the pandemic, uh, they asked us. the final certificate of vaccination so we submitted the same after submitting and the final vaccination certificate we got permission for five of our faculty members to visit their industry on 21 12 2021 that is last year december month 21st date okay five members from our institution dr s sandal principal in charge dr r suresh babu dean academics dr d prince winston uh, dean research and the dr s gandhi professor of polymer technology and myself visited the industry on that day visited the industry on that day uh, a team of members from the tvs industry uh, received us gave the warm welcome to us and they received us and took us to the conference hall 
the team members uh, representing the TVS industry are uh, one minute, please. Sorry, sir. Uh, there was one phone call from the office. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, Dr. A. N. Lakshmanan, uh, he's a general manager R and D section, and the Mr. M. Arivalakan, deputy general manager R and D section, and some members, uh, Gopinath, Mr. Gopinath, Mr. Sababadi, Mr. Murali, Mr. Deepak, Mr. Abhishek, Mr. Anand Babu and Mr. Shanmuga Shundaram uh, representing the various uh, departments of TVS like equality control section, uh, production section, maintenance sections. Welcome to us. Okay. And uh, uh, this is the agenda of the field visit we have planned. Okay. The first one is presentation about our college to the persons from the TVS indices uh, and then presentation about the TVS Euro group that is a TVS Sri Chakra Tire Cell Limited by the people from the TVS indices. After that field visit by us. Finally, the discussion about the problems identified. Uh, this is a main agenda of our field visit uh, during that day. OK, initially a presentation about our college and the year of starting and the purpose of starting uh, the vision uh, mission statement and uh, total quality policy of our college and the number of uh, UG programs offered currently and number of PG programs and the number of uh, research programs all the details were informed to them and also we informed uh, the milestones of our college in the presentation itself okay apart from that to impress the people from the industry, we showed some videos related to the uh, product what we have developed for the industry past three to four years. I want to show the same to you. Then only you can understand the importance of field visit for the problem identification. Okay. To make the students industry ready, uh, the faculty members of our college took the students for an industrial visit. It may be of duration two days, three days, or four days. Our insisted student to take implant training, IPT, or an industrial internship or to take the industrial projects. These are the some of the possibilities by which we can prepare our students industry reading. OK, apart from that. The faculty members of our college. Are also used to visit the industries more frequently. To get the consultancy projects as well as opportunity for developing a particular product for the uh, industry. Okay. Two years back, uh, the faculty members from the Department of Mechatronics Engineering, as well as Electronics and Communication Engineering, and also students from Electronics and Communication Engineering visited one of the renowned oil industry in Viridhanagar, IDM Oil Industries. During that visit, we identified two main problems in an industry. We discussed the problem uh, with the higher officials of that particular industry. Uh, they insisted us to develop a product to address a particular problem. Okay. 
i want to show these two products to you so that you can clearly understand the purpose of field visit in problem identification so bless you sir yes sir uh, can you show the two videos yes of yes, product sir. i will disconnect the sharing of my screen sir uh, now you will be able to share this screen, sir. So here uh, we developed the two missions for the problem we identified during our field visit to the IDM industries. The first one is the product what we developed is named as pouch folding machine. Pouch folding machine. Actually, they are having one small machine. Okay, uh, it's a pouch. Oil filling pouch machine. Oil filling pouch machines. They are marketing their oil through small sachet in 50 grams, 100 grams, 200 grams, 250 grams like that. Okay. The machine is a high productivity machine. Produces huge amount of packets per minute. And the Himalayan task is to get the packets from the machine in a safer manner and it should be folded so that these SASA packets should be placed in a cotton box so that only it will be transported carefully. For the packeting process, they employed four to five employees and they were sanding near to the particular machine. Even though there were four to five employees, they were not able to synchronize with the speed of the particular machine. Okay. 
so to avoid this problem we designed that automatic pouch folding machine okay. it reduces the manpower it reduces the manpower still it's working in the virality plant of idem indices today itself in a very good condition in a very good condition another one is normally there will be electrical fluctuation in the industry and also uh, they will change the uh, films for the size making process uh, due to this electrical fluctuation uh, before and after changing the film reels there will be sashes which is having more amount or lesser amount of oil inside the packet more amount or lesser amount of packets oil inside the packets what they will do they will identify these packets using a human being uh, workman and they will separate these packets from the output side of this uh, pouch machine and they will keep this underweight or overweight pouches in a particular place at the end of the every shift they ask another one employee human uh, man or woman to remove the oil inside the underweight as well as overweight pouches and also they will market these oils as a second grade oil and they want to design a machine to address this issue so what we did is we removed the oil from this underweight as well as overweight pouches using a shredding machine but here we took our most care in designing the blades of the shredding machine it won't damage the uh, pocket in such a way that the chemical elements in the pocket should not be mixed with the oil okay and removing this oil and recycle it so that the removed oil from the pouches will be marketed as a first grade quality these two machines we designed for idem oil indices and also uh, this time we are in the tire manufacturing industry so we want to show uh, one student projects related to the tire industry to the industry persons actually a team of uh, ec students did this project and they won the first prize in a competition so this is it this is the tire shorting Greetings to all. Thanks to CI Connect Madurai for wonderful opportunity. We are from Kamraj College of Engineering and Technology. I am Madhavan. He is Manohar Singh. Our mentor is T. Paniyappan, Assistant Professor ECE. Our data of the project is Vision Based Tire Sorting System. The objective of our project is to sort the tires based on their inner diameter, outer diameter and the tread pattern of the tire. So let us see the demonstration of how we have built the 3D model of the tire and prototype modeling. So this is the 3D printer modeling of our uh, of our tires in our uh, college laboratory. So we have used uh, flash force printer, 3D printer for 3D modeling of our tire. So you can see the various views of uh, how we have built a tire using the 3D printer. We are placing the first camera on the top of the bridge. Is that okay, sir? So now we are measuring the length and the width of the conveyor belt. 
so now this is our uh, final prototype model of our tire and we are rotating the conveyor belt in our project we are using three motors one two and three so the first two motors are used to hit the tires when uh, when we recognize it and the third motor is used to run the conveyor here we are using two web cameras to take the frames of top view and the rear view of the tire so the cameras we used are logitech c170 which is a 5 megapixel camera the first camera is used to take the top view of the tire and the next camera is used to take the rear view of the tire and we are also using a torch light of our mobile phone to make a optimum lightning in the environment this is where this is where we place the tire to capture the images of the tire these are the three types of tires we have modeled it is let us run the program now we are placing the first tire on the conveyor so the webcam recognizes the rear view and the top view of the tire and and the canny effect is seen in the picture we have taken the top view and the rear view of the tire after recognizing the pattern of the tire the first motor hits the tire now we are placing the second type of tire tire onto the conveyor after recognizing the inner diameter outer diameter and the canny and the pattern of the tire we, after pro doing the processing frames frames of the top view and the rear view the first motor skips the tire diameters of the tire is recognized after recognizing the second motor hits the tire so now we are placing the third type of tire on to the conveyor after recognizing the diameter and the pattern of the tire and doing the process image processing the conveyor there is no pattern so the first motor skips the tire and the second motor also skips the tire so the tire falls behind the conveyor so this is the prototype of our project thank you for watching our video sir we can stop the presentation now so that i can share my screen so after seeing all these videos they were very much interested and appreciated us and uh, they started to present and the information about their company so tvs tri chakra limited madurai it's a member of 8.5 billion us dollars tvs group it's a one of the member of tvs group okay. this tvs tri chakra limited is one of the india's largest manufacturers of tires and tubes for motorcycles scooter and mopeds and the off highway tires simply they will told us uh, ohp for an industrial application farm application as well as agriculture application and there are two units of tvs chiri chakra in india one is in madurai and the one is in uttarakhand each and every unit is able to produce 2.7 million tires per month 2.7 million tires per month and they are exporting to 70 countries in the world including usa europe latin america australia and the middle east uh, this is the history of uh, sri chakra limited madurai they started the production unit of tires in madurai 
during the year 1982 and they issued the shares to the public during the year 1983 and they started to export their tires during the year 1991 and they got the ISO certification for the quality management system ISO 9001 in the year 1996 after that after getting the ISO 9001 they started to implement uh, the tpm concept in the industry they implemented the tpm concept throughout the industry in the year 1999 so through this tpm concept they took the periodical as well as predictive maintenance of all the machines in industry that by they reduced the breakdown time of any machine in the industry which leads to improvement in the productivity and in the year 2000 they used the erp for maintaining uh, all the business activities using computers and in the year 2001 to increase the productivity they implemented lean manufacturing so productivity we know the formula for productivity it's nothing but output ratio of output to the input how to increase the productivity we can increase the output at the same time maintaining the same level of input or we can have the same level of output by reduce the input or we can increase the productivity by means of increasing the output at the same time reducing the input at the same time reducing the input here the lean manufacturing concept mainly focuses on the waste management on the waste management that by they are maintaining the same level of input but produces higher level of output but produces higher level of output and in the year 2002 they obtained the environmental management certification from iso it's iso 14001 okay in the year 2003 they got the tpm excellent award from the government first time from 2003 to 2006 for the consecutive four years they got the tpm excellence award from the government okay. and in the year 2007 they obtained the certification iso/ts16949 uh, this is an international standard for maintaining the automotive quality management okay. in 2008 they started a new plant in uttarakhand and in 2009 they got the manufacturing excellence award and the r&d center award from the government in 2011 they implemented the sap technology in their manufacturing industry in 2012 they started to export the product manufactured in the uttarakhand plant okay. in 2014 they introduced the radial type tires for the agriculture application and in 2016 they got the iso 50001 this is for the energy management quality management sorry quality energy management quality certificate okay. and in the year 2019 they changed the tvs t chakra limited as a tvs euro group indices now the industry is named as tvs euro group one so this is a history of tvs t chakra tires this is a aerial view of the tvs tri chakra limited or tvs hero group in the madurai locality some of the achievements of tvs tri chakra limited madurai they implemented lean manufacturing techniques through which they improved the performance of productivity by means of reducing the waste and they won the tpm excellence and consistency awards from the period of 
2003 to 6 and they awarded with the india manufacturing excellence award by pros and sullivan and this is the only tire company to receive the national energy conservation award from the government of india for four consecutive three uh, four consecutive years they are having in house test track for testing the tires being manufactured in both the plants madurai as well as uttarakhand and also since they are exporting the manufactured tires to 60 countries throughout the world they are having some overseas test riders for testing the tires and throughout the world they are having the overseas consultants consultants for the process improvement as well as for the product development uh, these are the some of the achievements okay today they are having four active certifications these are the certifications like iso 9001 2015 quality and iso 14001 and iso 45001 it is an operational health and safety standard certificate and iatf 16949 standard it's a international standard for maintaining the quality of the automobile product being manufactured in the manufacturing industry these four certificates are active now and it is active till march 2024 after that they have to uh, reapply for the certification so tire construction they are producing two types of tires the first one is cross clay tires and the next one is radial tires the difference is the number of plays are layers in the tires that's all and how these layers are oriented with respect to others in the cross over clay tires there will be multi layers and each layer there is a angle difference between 32 to 40 degree or 45 degree and the first one is bias technology uh, in that bias technology there is one inner layer followed by two play outer there is a thread okay in the bias filter technology they are having one additional layer here additional layer is named as a breaker uh, this is a radial tire construction uh, based on the materials used for construction material is same for both cross plate tires as well as for the radial tires the thing is how the layers are placed with respect to other layers okay here the radial tires means uh, the cars are wrapped radially around the tire from one bit to the other okay. in zero belt technology they are maintaining the zero degree between the uh, layers so both tube tires tube plus tires they are manufacturing through the category cross over play as well as radial tires okay. these are the sum of the tires they are manufacturing for motorcycles scooters and moped tires the first series is proto rq extreme the second one is proto rq sport uh, remora poly x sporto rq okay. these are the various tires they are manufacturing in both the plants madurai as well as uttarakhand plant for motorcycles scooters and moped scooters the series differs from the load carrying capacity as well as speed whereas inside the uh, series the tire is differed from the pattern only okay. this is the uh, tire specifications uh, since uh, the mobile phones were not allowed inside their industry during our field visit i take this picture from the net only okay and these are the pictures i took from the brochure e brochure and this is a, a image i have taken from the net for the study purpose okay so this is a tire width the main important parameter and the other is a tire height out uh, tire section height is here the section height is mentioned here so this is a tire width uh, tire width is here 
and this is the section height this is a section height okay uh, this is the outer diameter of the tire outer diameter inside the tire there will be one inner hole the size of the inner hole will be the rim diameter uh, rim diameter up to this there will be rim diameter if you look at the surface of the tire there will be certain markings on that it will be like this one 180 slash 55 is it or 70 like this one okay here 180 represents the nominal section width of the tire nominal section width of the tire whereas 55 uh, nominal section width is expressed in terms of millimeter whereas 55 represent the aspect ratio and the 17 represent the uh, diameter of the rim for which this uh, tire is manufactured so who is purchasing the tire you please uh, keep a look on this markings okay the remaining things uh, 73 w v 280 defines a load carrying capacity as well as speed rating of the tires it will vary from tire to tire okay. uh, this is a tire manufactured for the purpose of uh, fork lift so inside the ground to transfer the good from one place to another place the weight of the goods may be very very high so they will use the forklift for that forklift they are manufacturing tires these tires are called as industrial pneumatic tires okay. uh, for very high load applications they are producing these tires which are called as skid steer tires skid steer tires Uh, this is a multi purpose tires which are used in tractors okay. and this is a tire which is manufactured for specifically tractors it's called as a tractor industrial tires and also they are producing earth mover tires okay. you might have seen earth movers during the during your travel on the road side for that earth movers also they are producing the tires you might have seen these type of equipments also in the field of uh, agriculture for that purpose also they are producing form implement tires okay. so they have sewn all these tires during our field visit apart from this we have identified some of the problems in their industry like pouch folding machine here also 3 to 4 people are surrounding a particular machine for taking the uh, finished product finished tire from the machine and putting a spacer inside the particular tire and tie three to four tires using a jute for that they are employing a huge manpower okay if we automate this uh, space of fixing process as well as tire bundling process we can eliminate <coughs> the more unused manpower uh, from this uh, industry and also as i already shown in the previous slide based on the treads the tires in a series is vary based on the load carrying capacity and the speed rating of the vehicle every series is vary still there is a scope for new tire development by simply changing the tread pattern for simply changing the tread pattern for developing this new tread pattern in the r&d section they are having a group which are well versed in autodesk which are well versed in autodesk using that autodesk software they are modeling the tire after modeling they are fabricating the tire using the 3d printer available in the r&d section like uh, the ec students fabricated 
the three different tires using a 3D printer available in the mechatronics engineering department. In the R&D section of the TVS tires also, they are using Autodesk software to develop the tread pattern, new tread pattern for the tires. And for testing, they are fabricating the tires using 3D printers. Okay. They requested us to deport two students for developing a new tread pattern in the R&D section. Specifically, they asked the interdisciplinary students, one student from mechanical engineering and another one is from mechatronics engineering to have the internship for developing the new tread pattern for producing the new tires. Okay. We selected the students from third year mechanical engineering as well as from third year mechatronics engineering. Uh, they are supposed to report to the TVS indices during uh, on 19th January, but due to the pandemic situation, they postponed this internship program to the third week of February. Anyway, they will do intern for developing the new tread pattern for the tires. After fabricating the tires, there are also some other groups for painting the threads on the tires. If you automate this painting process, at the time also there is a possibility of reducing the manpower. Okay. Apart from tire manufacturing, they are manufacturing the tubes for the mopeds also. Okay. In the tube manufacturing section, uh, they are using two to three peoples for placing the wall over the tube. Uh, they told that uh, six months back there was an accident in the particular section uh, due to the misplacement of wall on the tube. To avoid these type of accidents, they want to automate that process also. So they want pick and place arrangement or robo for placing the wall on the tube. Okay. Thereby, there also they can reduce the manpower. So inside they are having so many units inside a, a single plant. In all the units, they are using heavy duty motors. You know, all the motors are inductive components. So they are not able to maintain the correct power factor. They are taking steps. They are doing so many audits. Even though there is a scope for further energy conservation, they are maintaining a good management system for energy conservation. That's why they got the award from the government for energy conservation. Even though they got the award for energy conservation from the government, they want to conserve more energy. For that also, they want to do the energy audit. Thereby we can reduce the energy consumed in each and every unit of the particular plant. Thereby we can reduce the production cost. So these are the some of the problems we identified during our field visit to the TVS industry. Okay. Uh, just four hours of field visit, we identified these problems. If we visit the indices two or more times, it's possible for us to identify more number of problems. Uh, six problems we identified and we prioritized the first two problems. And combined these two problems as a single problem, a space of fixing as a and a tire bundling. So after discussing with the higher officials of TVS company on that day, we left the industry. So. After that, 
uh, we constituted a committee for brainstorming in that brainstorming session only we prioritized the problem the first two space of fixing and tire bundling okay so these are the spaces which are fixed inside the tires to maintain to maintain the same width so that it can be fitted to the rim of the vehicle more firmly and nowadays in most of the vehicle we are using only two plus tires so there should be firm contact between the rim of the vehicle and the tire while manufacturing the tire they are maintaining the same width of the inner uh, of the inner diameter but during the transport there may be reduction in the width of the inner dia uh, width of the inner dia to maintain or to keep the inner dia as it is they are fixing the spaces inside the tires after fixing the spaces also during the transport there is a chances of misplacement of spaces it may drop from the tire for the bundling process okay to avoid that they are tying the spaces using jute or a strapping machine okay. for this uh, tying operation uh, tire bundling operation as well as fixing placing the spacer inside the gap of that tire they are using huge amount of manpower if you automate this process we can reduce more amount of manpower from the particular industry that's why requirement also that's why we prioritized this task as a highest priority one and <coughs> to take the pilot study again a group of faculty members from mechanical electronics uh, electrical uh, mechatronics along with the prototype members and the two stu students members from the department of ece <coughs> we visited again the tvs industry on january 6 on january 6 and uh, we are brainstorming with the group members to provide the final solution to the industry for the particular problem of space of fixing as well as tire bundling okay. so that's the end of the session on this discussion of exposure and the field visit for problem identification so if you have any doubts please ask me now and also i request the students to have ideas related to the problems what we have identified during our field visit to the tvs industry you can send a mail to me also your ideas are most welcome so students if you have any doubt please ask me now otherwise we will wind up the session and main key take away from this session on exposure and field visit to field visit for problem identification is the importance of field visit for real time problem identification <coughs> from the institution <coughs> we can say that we are preparing the student for the industry ready but the students will be industry ready if and only if students are visiting the industry regularly if they are visiting the industry regularly 
at that time they will be able to identify the problems small small problems in all types of manufacturing industry there is a scope for hardware automation <coughs> so if you visit the industry you will be able to find out the problems so as in the form of in plant training or internship or industrial project you may visit the industry at that time if you find some problems in the industry and if you address a particular problem by means of giving solutions definitely there is a scope for the students for getting the placement in the particular industry so with these words i thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to share our experience with the students as well as i thank all the participants of this meeting for their patient listen thank you thank you one all thank you sir thank you thank you